The Schedule Assistant in Dynamics 365 Field Service is a feature that helps dispatchers assign work orders and other jobs to the closest and most appropriate resources. When the dispatcher triggers the Schedule Assistant, the system will recommend resources that meet the job's requirements, like time windows and skills needed, among others. The system will also show the travel time for the recommended resources to travel to the work order job site, helping dispatchers to schedule the closest resources and reduce travel time and costs. When the dispatcher chooses a resource and time slot that works, he or she can officially book the job, at which point the resource will see it on his or her schedule. On the schedule board, the technician's starting location and travel route will appear. In this video, let's explore how to configure and use the Schedule Assistant. To use the Schedule Assistant, you first need to create a work order and define what a resource would need to complete the job. From the Field Service app, go to Work Orders and create a new one. In this example, we will choose the customer the work order is for in the Service Account field. Next, we will define the specific work that needs to be done in the primary incident type field, in this case, fire system maintenance. By just defining the customer and the incident, we are already beginning to specify what resources we need for this job. This type of job generally takes 2.5 hours, so we will need a resource who is available for at least that much time. And by selecting the customer account, the address is automatically populated on the work order and the job site location will show on the map. This means we will need a resource who is close by. If the customer site is not showing, simply select the geocode button at the top and the system will attach a latitude and longitude to the address. In the settings section, we can see even more details. The work location is set to on-site, meaning we need one of our resources to go to the customer's location. And from the service account, the service territory is set to Washington State meaning we want someone who also belongs to the same territory. In the Preferences section, we can add time windows. As an example, we will say this work order should be scheduled this week, sometime between Monday and Friday. To get more specific, we have the option to enter a promised time window that is both a date and a time and is more strict. These time parameters and the other details are all used by the Schedule Assistant to recommend resources later on. For now, we will just use a date window. Then we will save the work order. When a work order is saved and created, a resource requirement record is automatically created in the background. This is where we can define even more requirements for what kind of a resource or technician should be scheduled to this work order. Go to Related, then Requirements. Here you'll see many of the same details we added to the work order like the date window we chose and that this job is for 2.5 hours. First thing we will do is define what types of resources can do this job. Let's select users and contacts. Other options include facilities, equipment, and crews. Next, we will choose what skills are needed to perform this work order. One skill was already automatically added from the incident type we chose on the work order but we can add and delete more as needed. For each skill, you can define a rating value, like if the resource needs to be very good or just proficient at the skill. And the Schedule Assistant will find resources who both have the skill and the rating value. Back on the requirement, you can add what roles or titles the resource should have. In this example, we will say we want a resource with the robotics technician role. Next, we will choose the organizational unit. In our example, we want this work order to be scheduled to someone who is part of the Seattle organizational unit. This business unit or organizational unit has different meanings based on your specific business needs, but it typically represents offices, branches, and locations, and more things that employees are part of. Lastly, we will add a resource preference which is your chance to define specific resources that should or should not be scheduled to this work order. There are three options. Preferred means that you would prefer to schedule to this resource, but it is not a requirement. Restricted 
means this resource will be excluded from Schedule Assistant results. And Must Choose From means this resource must do the job. Once we are done defining the resource attributes needed, we will save and go back to the work order. We are almost ready to schedule this work order with the Schedule Assistant. The last step is to ensure we have resources to show in results. From the Field Service app, go to the Resources section and then Resources. Create a new resource or select one that is already created. In our example, this resource is of type User, which is one of the types we noted we wanted on the work order requirement. We can also see this resource has multiple skills, one of which is needed for the work order. And this resource also has the robotics technician role. In the scheduling tab, this resource belongs to the Seattle organizational unit. The location of this resource is set to resource address, which means he starts his day at the address on his user record. To understand this location better, go to the user record and see the scheduling section and the address. Note that this information is coming from the user record in the Office 365 Admin Center. Back on the resource record, ensure Enable for Availability Search is set to Yes. This means the resource is eligible to be displayed in Schedule Assistant results given he or she meets the other criteria of the search. And lastly, the resource will only show in Schedule Assistant results if his calendar defines that he is working. Save the resource and configure all of the resources in your system with their specific attributes from skills and roles to location and working hours. The Schedule Assistant considers all of it. Next, let's trigger the Schedule Assistant for the work order we created and explore more details and filters. Go to the Schedule Board and find your work order in the lower resource requirement pane. Select and highlight the requirement and choose Find Availability to trigger the Schedule Assistant. Resources that match the work order criteria will show in the middle of the Schedule Board. The filter pane on the left will show all the requirement details the Schedule Assistant is considering. Everything in the filter pane can be edited by the dispatcher before or after triggering the schedule assistant. This may be needed to find resources who can do the job and is good in situations where the filters can be relaxed or in situations where the filters need to change based on business needs like high priority jobs. At the top is the search for filter. This lets dispatchers decide if they want to search for resources that were already on the current filtered schedule board tab or if it can search across all the resources on any of the tabs along the top that also meet the filter criteria of the Schedule Assistant. As noted on the work order, we are searching for a resource to go on site and can work for 2.5 hours. We are also looking for someone within 70 miles of the work order location. Again, all of this is editable. The date windows we chose on the work order are filtered here on the Schedule Assistant as well. Down below, we can see things like skills and roles that we added to the work order requirement. The skills or characteristics filter uses AND logic. So if a dispatcher adds another skill and triggers the schedule assistant again, the schedule assistant will recommend resources who have both skills. In contrast, the roles filter uses OR logic. Below that, we can see other attributes on the work order and requirement that the Schedule Assistant is filtering recommended resources by. These are important filters like service territory, organizational unit, and resource types. The preferred resource we entered earlier is also being considered, and this is why the Abraham McCormick resource has a heart icon in the search results. This indicates that he is preferred for this job. Beyond the schedule board, 
there are more places to trigger and use the schedule assistant. As an example, go to the resource requirement of the work order. You will see a book button at the top ribbon. Selecting this will also trigger the schedule assistant and will display recommended resources in a grid view. For each resource, you can see a time slot they are available and how far they would have to travel based on if they are traveling from home, the office, or another job site. Select the time slot and then select book and exit in the right panel to schedule the technician resource. Furthermore, if you go to the list of work orders, you can select one from the list and choose the same book button in the top ribbon. Next, let's head back to the schedule board. Dispatchers can trigger the schedule assistant from the map view as well. Simply find the work order requirement on the map view. Then hover over the pin and select Find Availability in the tooltip pop-up. In this example, we will schedule it after another work order and we can see the route is updated on the map for the technician to travel to two customer locations to complete two work orders. There are even more ways to use the schedule assistant. After a work order is already booked, you can right click and choose rebook to use the schedule assistant to reschedule the booking. In this example, we will reschedule to the same resource but starting tomorrow. And then we'll select exit search when done. This can be done regardless of how the booking was originally scheduled, like if it was scheduled manually with drag and drop or automatically with resource scheduling optimization. In addition, you can schedule the same job to multiple resources with the Schedule Assistant too. Simply trigger the Schedule Assistant and book it to a resource's time slot. But before selecting Exit Search, simply select another resource's time slot and select Book Again. You can keep on doing this for multiple resources. Beyond work orders, you can also use the Schedule Assistant to schedule other types of jobs. The Schedule Assistant will work on any entity that you have enabled for scheduling. As an example, in the Sales section of Field Service, we have a list of leads, and one of the leads we want to schedule a product consultation for. Because the leads entity has previously been enabled for scheduling, the Book button appears at the top of the Leads form. In addition, just like for work orders, related to the lead is a requirement where we can add more details for what resource should do the product consultation. Since this product consultation can take place over the phone, we will set work location to location agnostic instead of on-site like the work orders. Then we will save. Back on the leads form, select book and we can schedule it to a resource just like we've used the schedule assistant for other entities. Before booking, we will set the booking status to proposed as we want to wait for approval from the customer before it is committed. It will still be scheduled, it will just be scheduled with a different status. As a reminder, you can enable entities for scheduling by going to the Resource Scheduling app, then Settings, and then Administration. On the left side is where you can choose new entities to enable for scheduling. And on the right side, you will see entities that have already been enabled. You can double click on them for more configuration options. The Schedule Assistant is used for multi-resource scheduling with requirement groups. This capability allows you to find and schedule multiple resources to do a job and book them all with one click. Common scenarios include scheduling a person and a facility together or a group of people to install a machine. Let's get started. From the Field Service app, go to Requirement Groups in the left pane. Here, we will create a requirement group to schedule a workshop appointment for a customer with a trainer and a classroom at the same time. First, create a requirement group and then save. 
We can then use the grid below to quickly create multiple requirement records. We will start by adding two requirements. The first one will be for a large classroom, and the second one will be for a trainer resource. We will use the Schedule Assistant to find a classroom and trainer that are both available at the same time. Next, we can add more details like a time frame and a duration. We will search for a classroom and a trainer that are both in the same organizational unit, in this case, Seattle. And for characteristics, we want to search for trainers that have a C-sharp teaching certification. So we will add that as a characteristic. If needed, you can select the requirement row and select open form to add more details on the Dynamics 365 form. For the first requirement, we will set resource type to facility because we need a classroom. And for the requirement for the trainer, we will set resource type to user or contact. After setting up the requirements, select book to trigger the schedule assistant. The Schedule Assistant will return different combinations of trainers and facilities that are available at the same time. You can expand different options to see more details, like the time slot and which resource relates to which requirement. When ready, select Book and Exit to schedule both resources at the same time. Let's take a look at another example. Here is a requirement group for a work order that calls for three technicians for three hours, each requiring a different skill. Selecting book again, the schedule assistant finds many different combinations of resources who have the skills and availability who can all arrive at the same time. You can see in the travel time column, the schedule assistant calculates the travel time for each resource to get to the work order based on their individual schedules and locations.